By the end of this video, I'm going to go over three factors to help put you on bass very quickly. And if you love the challenge of fishing a new body of water, this is going to be such a great tool. Number one is always start on the north side. Start looking there. Why? Because the sun kick starts everything. It's the most important factor for life on our planet and life under the water is no different. Without it, the entire food chain does not exist. And the way we sit right here in North America, the north shoreline or the north bank is going to get the most direct sunlight. Now, we have a lot of viewers in South Africa and Australia. For you, it's going to be just the opposite. Now, I'm not saying the other shorelines don't hold fish, not at all, but if you want to get out there and put yourself in the best position to find the majority of the bass in a particular area, that north shoreline is such a home run. If your waters have vegetation, well, this is where a lot of it is going to be because of that sunlight. It needs that sunlight. And because the vegetation is there, usually the best oxygenated water is going to be there as well. Take a look at this footage right here between the wind blowing and all the vegetation releasing oxygen in this particular part of the lake. It, it looks like the bubbler in a fish tank. It is just incredible. Now, even if your bodies of water don't have big stands of vegetation, let's say it's a highland reservoir that's used for flood control, that movement of the water up and down often eliminates that possibility of vegetation. But what you still have are microorganisms that rely on that sunlight and they are the very beginning of the food chain. So even if you don't have huge beds, you know, of curly pondweed or hydrilla, whatever it might be, you still have these microorganisms that need the sun. They're going to get the most direct sunshine on that north side. Number two is how is the wind hitting that north shoreline on the day that you want to go fishing? Maybe there's no wind, but if there is wind, is it a traditional seasonal wind pattern that's going to help out. Let's say, for example, a lot of times as the weather is warming, you've got a southwest wind or even a direct south wind. Well, in both of those situations, that wind is going to be helping the oxygen levels, the food chain activity on that north shoreline. Now, a cold wind, a cold northwest wind or north wind, that's a different situation. Remember, wind that is seasonal or fits seasonal patterns and hitting a north shoreline, those are two major plus factors. Now in just a minute, after I go over factor number three, I'm literally going to show you underwater how bass relate to this next factor. And that leads me right into number three. Now that you've narrowed down a part of the lake, you've identified which way the wind is blowing in relation to that part of the lake, you've got to find bait and this could be shad this could be panfish most of the time i prefer to find the panfish and when you find the bait the bass are going to be in that general area as a matter of fact a lot of people could say that's the number one factor you could take it from number three all the way up to number one find the food find the bass right it is that strong of a correlation and the reason i like to find panfish is Number one, they're a lot easier to find, right? They're so, they, they can form such massive schools. They're easy to see on graphs. If you're a shore angler, you can see the panfish out there easier than you can see shad if they're just below the surface. If you've got electronics, obviously those big balls of shad are pretty easy to pick out as well. But big bass tend to like panfish as well. It provides a great meal, the amount of calories that they get, the energy they get in comparison to the effort needed to catch that food is a win-win for bass and big bass always are on the plus side of calories versus energy burned. This factor is so important there are a lot of times when I first get on the water, the very first thing that I do is put that trolling motor down and I crank it up and I just start cruising around in an area, looking around out away from the bank a little bit as long as I can see okay. And I want to find where the bait is in the water column, okay? Are those, are those bluegills and panfish, are they up really shallow? Well, if so, I'm probably going to start shallower or more up in the water column. If I'm cruising down that shoreline and I'm not seeing any panfish, no minnows, no bait whatsoever, well, that's a good indicator. I need to be lower in the water column. 
Now, how do bass position themselves in relationship to this bait fish, the food that's up in the water column? Most often they are going to be just under it or right at that same level with it, especially if they are getting into that feeding mood. They like to attack right at that same level or from below and up. This is why, for example, if you're fishing a jerk bait out in open water, you want that jerk bait to be right there at their level or slightly above it. Below it, you're going to get way less bites. And this is why. So once I have found where that bait is at, where those bait fish are hanging out, I'm going to start to probe just a little bit below them and then work my way up from there especially if i'm using a swimming type of allure and trying to cover some water to narrow down where those bass are positioned now of course bottom bouncing baits will work as well if you're in a high percentage area which is what we are trying to do here is put ourselves in the high percentage area if you've got bass there and they notice something rummaging around scooting along on the bottom and it looks like an easy opportunity for a meal yet yeah, you're gonna get bit. The real key is find the bass as fast as possible and the highest concentration of bass that we can find. So when you put all these factors together and you can check off these boxes, you know you're in a good spot to start. And hey, if you wanna watch a video that talks about the truth when big bass are most likely to feed, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.